are these people? Colin, you went on Press TV recently, right? And Yeah. Yeah, I think you had um, some stuff from that. Yeah, so I spoke... Um, so by the time uh, we upload this episode, uh, I don't think the interview will be out yet. But I t briefly spoke about China's mediation in the Beijing Declaration that was signed last week by various Palestinian factions. And since that interview, I thought more about this joint venture in regards to BRICS. Um, in your opinion, is the liberation of Palestine possible when China, Russia, and even Iran have seemingly backed proposals for Hamas and others to unite with Fatah and the PLO? Um, I kind of have mixed feelings about yeah. this China venture with the, with the resistance factions. Because if you if you look at what historically has happened with Palestine, and I'm, I'm just reading uh, the Hundred Years War on Palestine, which I recommend to everyone to read because historically it's it's just fascinating. Um, Palestine has kind of been used as a political football by almost every country involved uh, in the cause from the beginning. And, you know, we kind of shouldn't forget, really, that it was the US and the Soviet Union that voted um, for the partitioning of Palestine um, back in 47, when it, you know, it was partitioned by the UN. Britain actually abstained because Britain at that point had realized that actually the Zionist project wasn't such a great idea yeah. because, you know, it, <laughs> it was actually going to kind of um, take control of British Middle East interests away from the British and put it in the lap of, of the United States and potentially even then the Soviet Union. Um, to some degree, and I haven't really kind of gone into this in any depth, and I haven't really talked about it prior to now, I, it's, it's just a nagging doubt in my mind as to why this was done. Um, and potentially, and also I tend not to look at these things with kind of rose-tinted glasses like a lot of people do, because I think you have to forget about that, because even China and Russia have their own national interests mm -hmm. as in a priority. India. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, oh God. no! Don't get me on India. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't get me on India. Brazil, um, both of them. Like. Yeah. yeah. No, you know, and I. Yeah. I. I think that's where we have to be really careful as journalists, not to get kind of swept <laughs> away by. Oh my God! There's a resolution, and and there's a you know, um, I mean, effectively, look, China brokered effectively, I suppose, the peace between Iran and Saudi Arabia, but there's still issues. Peace. You know, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's, it's kind of, it's a lot of politics and maneuvering. And I think what was very telling for me was after the statement had been put out about um, the, the reconciliation, and of course, China was taking credit for having brought them all together. Right. Um, I think it was in Al Mayadeen, they published the fact that um, a, a number of the resistance factions had actually said it's not accurate because we insisted for the PLO, for example, that they should cease to recognize the, the state of Israel. So um, I actually published quite recently um, a kind of a bit of a manifesto from what I would consider the real uh, groundswell of Palestinian resistance, um, who are very critical, actually, historically, of the role of the PLO and of Fatah, um, and even of Hamas to, to some degree, and the degree to which they've kind of um, sold out Palestinian nationalism. So from my perspective, and again, you know, it's, it's a controversial subject, but let's take Hamas, for example. Hamas are effectively um, Muslim Brotherhood, and Hamas were involved in the destabilization project in Syria. 
um, they were expelled from Syria as a result. Damascus had given um, refuge to Khaled Mashal and Ismail Hanye, the leaders, the political wing leaders in Hamas, until they realized that actually Hamas was betraying them. Um, now, since 2017, uh, Said Nasrallah, uh, the Secretary General of Hezbollah, has been brokering normalization between Hamas and the original uh, resistance axis, which is Iran and Syria and elements within Iraq and Hezbollah, because Hamas had pivoted towards, um, you know, the, the heavy funders in Qatar and Saudi Arabia. And of course, the two countries were responsible for funding the regime change war in Syria, Qatar particularly. And so uh, Fatah, we know, is, is just a wingman for the Zionist entity, right? I mean, Fatah is a joke for most Palestinians. Um, when I'm also speaking about the betrayal of Hamas, I'm not necessarily talking about the uh, military wing, by the way, because right. the armed resistance and the multiple, there's more than 17 armed resistance factions in Gaza. It's only because Hamas has been given uh, in a sense, the the leading role um, by the resistance axis also, who have promoted Hamas as, as the kind of head of all these resistance factions. Right. Um, <clears throat> but it depends really who from Hamas was involved, who from Fatah was involved in this reconciliation process. But personally, I remain a little bit skeptical, and I, okay. I, that's just my personal perspective, but I would like to talk to my friends, um, you know, like Marwa Osman and so on, and I haven't yet had right. an opportunity to do so, but I, I am skeptical.